I found it very, very good. I mean, I really, I, th I thought to myself, what a, a freeing thing it is that he would say very unapologetically, this is my position. I buy completely into the theory of evolution. This is the way it is. Um, this is the way it's going to be. Just from what I heard from Dr. Miller, I talked it over with my roommate afterwards. And what was refreshing, she and I think a lot alike, so this wasn't terribly surprising. But for us, it was incredibly refreshing to have someone come and blatantly say, I am an evangelical Christian, and I believe in evolution, and to not blink. That was very exciting for both of us, because I feel that sometimes the professors here may believe that, but they can't openly come out and say, this is what I feel, because it's like coming out of the closet almost <laughs> in our interpretation, because it's, you don't want to do that, because then someone may label you a liberal, you know, God forbid. I want to sing. The symposium may have reassured students like Emi Hayashi that Christianity and evolution can coexist. But not everyone on campus feels so comfortable with Darwin and his theory. Peter Slayton is an anthropology major, a singer, and, he says, a Texan born in the Bible Belt. For him, the arguments for evolution still aren't strong enough to overcome the convictions he brought with him to Wheaton. At this point, I'm still asking questions. Like, I don't know. If I had to pick a side, I would probably pick young earth creationism just because that's what I grew up with. That's what I'm comfortable with. And so far, nothing in evolution has been able to con convince me, like, soundly that this is the way it happened. One, two, three. The give to. Yeah, maybe play the bitch after we're done singing. <laughs> yeah, after we're done singing. I think what upsets me about the issue is the fact that one way or another you're called to reinterpret something like if you pick sides, the other side's going to accuse you of either doing bad science or doing bad theology. And like either way, it's like a lose-lose situation. You can't really pick sides and do everything right. What bugs me the most is um, students or maybe people who um, don't know a lot about the issues try to threaten me and by saying, if you believe this, you know, you're not really believing the Bible is true or whatever. Beth Steubing, a pre-med student in her final year at Wheaton, is the daughter of missionaries. She grew up in Zambia, surrounded by nature. We live kind of outside of town in the forest, and we just kept all sorts of pets, like chameleons, bush babies, snakes, you name it. So we were always kind of surrounded by nature. And I didn't really grow up with the baggage of, you know, six-day creation is the only way to go. And so from an early age, I was just taught to be open to a lot of different ideas. And I think that was really beneficial. One of the things that I've thought a lot about is just how God works in us. Where is God's place if everything does have a natural cause? And it's been difficult for me, especially being in science, to think about that in an intellectual way. So I was hoping by coming to Wheaton that I could be in a Christian environment where I could think. That was really, really important to me because I wanted the Bible brought into some of these issues that I thought about in science. That was important to me. But at the same time, I didn't want to have someone open the Bible and say, this is how you will interpret the Bible. We can't have that many idiots out there in science. That's just not possible. So for a Christian to point their finger at a scientist and say you're wrong without having any understanding of what they're talking about is laughable. Just as if a scientist laughs at someone's theology and who's never cracked the Bible at all, again, it's the same thing. You can't do it one way or the other. It's just they have to understand where scientists are coming from. They have to understand this is the data, this is what we have. Now, can you make sense of that with the Bible? OK, my question for you is uh, how many of you have turned up to be more confused now that you've been at Wheaton than you were when you came. <laughs> OK, well, that's, that's interesting in itself. But uh, what does that mean? I mean, confused in what sense? Are you going out having lost your faith, or? It's a struggle. It's a struggle in my life to go back and forth where, where does God infuse his image in us? Where does God select us? I want that warm, fuzzy feeling of God specifically took his hands, if he has hands, and picked <laughs> up some stuff and put me together. Whether it's taking my DNA and putting the nucleotides together or what, I want something like that. I think to a certain degree, it's expected that you do believe in six-day creation. I think so. 
I would almost gather that's the overall theme on this campus, though you're not condemned for believing in evolution. I, there's a distinction because six day creations taught in Sunday school and I'd say 75% of us come from the Sunday school background. So that's all we've learned. And we've been taught by our Sunday school teachers, evolution is bad, evolution is of the devil. So therefore, whatever they say, just don't believe it. For students like Emmy Hayashi, biblical literalism no longer defines their faith. But for Ken Ham, the frequently repeated fundamentalist expression still holds true. God said it, I believe it, that settles it. What, what are these, buddy? You're a dinosaur expert. Okay, that's Triceratops. You don't see many Noah's Ark models with dinosaurs going on the Ark, do you? No, you don't. But, but dinosaurs were land animals, and all land animals would have went on the Ark, yeah. so, so it needs to be done. That's so represent Ham on and millions of other conservative Christians are convinced that it is the biblical story, not the evolutionary story, that America's children need to hear. Not just in Sunday school, but in every school. Yes, uh, we are concerned about what's happening in high schools. We're concerned about what's happening in the culture. We're concerned that whole generations of children are coming through an education system basically devoid of the knowledge of God. Ultimately, if you're just a, 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 a mixture of chemicals, what is life all about? Why this sense of hopelessness, this sense of purposelessness? And the reason is because they're given no purpose and meaning in life. If you aren't on the computer tutorial today, at least beginning it and getting a good, a good piece of that done, you're not going to finish it up before the end of the unit. And um, is that all we had to tell them? Yep, that's it. Let's go. OK, let's go. And if this were something to eat, let me borrow the second Claire McKinney, a scientist and Christian in Lafayette, Indiana, is one of thousands of high school science teachers across the country caught in the ongoing struggle between biblical literalism so and evolution. The, the stakes are high for teachers and students alike. Oh. Does she have that sheet? When I was the same age as the students that I now teach, my experience was much the same as theirs, coming from a strong Christian home and active involvement in my church. I did accept that the Bible was the word of God and not to be challenged. And I did accept that. And then as a teenager, when I really started having an increased interest in the sciences and really started looking at the scientific method and what makes science science, and they seemed contrary to me. McKinney knew that some of her students were feeling these same frustrations over the conflicts between what they had learned in their Sunday schools and homes and what they were learning in her class. But she never expected them to take matters into their own hands. She was taken aback when the students circulated a petition demanding that something they call special creation be added to their science curriculum. McKinney and her fellow teachers were even more surprised when over half the students in the school and 35 members of the faculty signed on in support of their cause. When I looked at the paper, um, yesterday morning, the five pictures I saw were outstanding kids that are outstanding students that did very well in this class. And I was really surprised to see some of them sitting in that picture because I thought they understood the difference between science and non-science. And it's fairly obvious to me that if they did at one time, they don't right now. All the teachers, you always hear that we do not accept or reject the existence of God. But when they're accepting biology so freely and saying it's the only way, then, I mean, they might not directly be saying it, but indirectly, that's what they mean. Why are we so afraid about mentioning that there is a God if, in fact, about 80%, <clears throat> I would say, in the world believe there is a God? If you have a religion, and if, unless you're an atheist, which I'm sure is a small minority, then there is a God. You believe, hey, there's a higher being out there. Even and even if you're afraid to admit that, if you're afraid to admit that in class because, ooh, you'd be pressing on someone that there is a God, wouldn't you be just as afraid to press on someone there isn't a God? That, to me, is a scary world. It just shocks me that we could find all this information to su support special creation, mm -hmm. and they say there's none out there. It's like, where are you looking? Because I can, like, give you a book, you know, if you want to know. I don't know if this is an isolated incidence of kids just becoming passionate about the situation, or if this is actually the new creationist game plan. Uh, if, you can't, if you can't attack evolution 
uh, in the Supreme Court, then maybe you can go around and pull one evolution weed at a time to get rid of it. That's what I'm afraid of. People actually don't understand the issues. People are being told, first, you have to choose between faith and science. You have to choose between especially Christianity and evolution. They're being told, well, it's only fair to give both points of view. It's only fair to uh, teach evolution and balance it with creation science or intelligent design theory or something like that. From their tiny offices in a small northern California town, Eugenie Scott and the staff of the National Center for Science Education deploy an arsenal of weapons to defend the teaching of evolution. Hi, Emily. Hi, Jeannie. Often, the hardest part is just getting people to understand what is and what isn't science. Evolution or science in general can't say anything about whether God did or did not have anything to do with it. All evolution as a science can tell us is what happened can't tell us who done it. And as what happened, the evidence is extremely strong that the galaxies evolved, the planets evolved, the sun evolved, and living things on Earth shared common ancestors. You're probably right. Because yeah. At the National Center for Science Education, calls come in from across America from teachers who continue to be accused of locking God out of their classrooms. When Steve Randack called from Lafayette, Indiana, he got the help he wanted. But he was troubled by what he heard. This is Eugenie Scott. Eugenie Scott told me that this is the first time, to her knowledge, that students have taken the initiative. And I am very much concerned that there will be other places where children will step forward, uh, protest, uh, ask school boards to be listened to, and the school boards won't do the right thing. I think they think someone will come out a victor, and I don't believe that that's going to be the case. But win or lose, for McKinney students, this is a battle worth fighting. Tonight, they are taking their petitions to the Lafayette School Board to demand that the members take a public stand for or against special creation. They claim that complex biological structures could not have arisen through natural selection at all but had to have been created by some higher intelligence. According to their teachers, the future of science education at Jefferson High may be riding on the board's response. As a teacher, you feel compelled to, to soothe the distress these kids are having. And so school boards are going to feel the same thing. Uh, Joyce, we can have roll call, please. And that sense of fairness is something that school board members have. and. I think would respond to, and I think it's, I think it's going to be dangerous. I'd like to call this meeting to order the Lafayette School Board of Trustees. First of all, welcome. I understand some of you are here tonight to discuss the science curriculum at uh, Jefferson High School, so let me see the show of hands of people that are there for that. Okay, thank you. Let's just move in. Uh, are there any uh, comments from the public? It's now open. All right. One issue that continues to confront American society is that of the teaching of the theories of evolution and special creation in our schools. The assumption of the theory of evolution is that all living things have resulted from chance interactions. The assumption of special creation is that the physical universe and living creatures in it have been fashioned by a supreme being. Please understand that those of us supporting this petition do not advocate the, te the banning of teaching of the theory of evolution. However, we believe that the theory of evolution should be taught alongside the alternative theory of special creation. Let us be taught the facts so that we can decide on our own. Thank you. For these students, the argument isn't about science versus the Bible. It's about which views of science will be taught. It is a tactic pioneered in 1961 when a revolutionary book by Henry Morris and John Whitcomb used carefully selected scientific evidence to support the creationist cause. The Genesis Flood is the foundational document for creation science. Everything else has been built upon this book. He makes uh, a number of claims in here that you can somehow find scientific evidence to demonstrate that the Earth was created like a literal reading of Genesis says. 